Hi, everybody, and welcome to IUP Football Coverage and the Coach Kurt Signetti Show. Jack Benedict with you. We talk IUP football, and, well, we talk about a win at Edinburgh, and it was a, it was a tough one, 18-8, to the final score, IUP winning its fourth game in five outings. Coach, uh, joining us here as we talk about that game, and uh, I know uh, going into the game, it was like uh, we don't care that Edinburgh didn't have a win because we knew it was going to be a tough game, and that's, in, in fact, uh, what happened. Gave you a battle. Uh, maybe your, uh, your view of it, of course, the defense and the special teams were outstanding. Yeah. Well, Edinburgh had played four very tough opponents. Yeah. So, you know, they're a good football team. And uh, we really challenged our guys to go on the road and, and play better. Uh, and, and, and still, the objective is to win, whether you win by 1, 10, or, or 30. You know, and, and we accomplished that objective. I was really proud of the way our defense played. Uh, we challenged the defensive line to really get after them this week. We had 10 sacks in the game. And uh, it was man, man on man. You know, it was our front four whipping their offensive line and getting to the quarterback. Every once in a while, maybe it was a blitz. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had 11 silver hats flying to the ball every single play, flew around. I mean, we're really making progress there every week, and we got to continue to build on it. So uh, tremendous effort by the defense. I thought our special teams, too, aside from the first punt, which we muffed, mm -hmm. after that was excellent the whole day. So, you know, those two areas were really good. How much of an effect going into the game and when the toss of the coin, all this and all that, was about a 20-mile-an-hour win, yeah. and you had to figure out, well, I don't know if down below, was it swirling at times, yeah. too? A little bit, and I thought the wind was a factor, especially going against the wind. Uh, a little bit more difficult to throw the football. Uh, you know, with the wind at your back, uh, you could make all the throws. Fortunately, it was dry. It was, you know, it was a little cold. But, uh, you know, I don't think it was a huge factor in the game. Mm -hmm. But it did affect the way you played when you were going against the wind some. Well, I know uh, Brett Allman got an opportunity to kick a field goal, not one but three, and he went three for three. So he, he did it on a most difficult day. But you needed all that because you know, halftime, it's only 6 nothing. Yeah. Well, we had not kicked a field goal all year long because every time we got in the red area, we'd scored a touchdown. And we got in the red area four times in this game and came away with nine points, three field goals. And that was probably the most disappointing thing was – open the game, run a lot of positive plays, get down to the five or six, run two base runs and lose seven yards. Mm -hmm. Next time we get down in the red area, have a pass called wide open receiver. We don't block it quite right. Ball gets batted down. Uh, and then get down there, you know, uh, another time and drop a touchdown pass and then have first and goal on the four and, and fumble the ball. So, but, you know, it put us in a situation where we had to play in another close game which there's, there's merit to that, getting your team in those kind of situations mm -hmm. uh, where they can overcome in close games. I, I would have rather it not been a close game because the way our defense played, if we would have converted on our opportunities offensively, it could have been a route. Mm -hmm. and, and we were heading there uh, in the third quarter. Offense had a nice drive for a touchdown, went down again, kicked the field goal, first down, and we fumbled the ball. We were going to make it 23-0 at that point, and I think the route would have been on. But uh, it wasn't a B. Mm -hmm. The uh, touchdown pass from Chase Saslett to Drew Carswell, uh, that's a tough catch. Uh, he had a defender right there. Yeah. I know I'm pretty far away to call that thing, but you need a lot of concentration to haul that in. He did. Yeah, it was a really good throw, too, by Chase. I mean, he put it right where it had to be. And, and Drew 6'4", 6'4 and a half. And he, he made a stretch catch right there in the corner of the end zone, uh, just like you see on Sundays. It was very well executed. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, another kicker, Matt Spiegel, your, your kicker, mm -hmm. your punter. Uh, did a great job because you know, you got to deal with that win situation. But I think on three different possessions, Edinburgh was at their one, two, and three. Yeah. So your field position, that was a big thing. In this yeah, game. we had great field position the whole day. And uh, Matt did a tremendous job of kicking the ball, as did Brett. And uh, hopefully we keep that up because uh, it's a winning edge, no doubt about it. Yeah. Now, right now, things that are carrying you, and we saw it with the Steelers the other day, defense and special teams, and your offense is doing enough, and you're getting some wins right. here. Uh, at this point, the halfway mark of the season, yeah. where do you have to improve? Well, you know, I think against Mercyhurst, we played a total football game. Offense was hitting on all cylinders. Defense was outstanding. Special teams were really good. Mm -hmm. It was 34-0 early in the second quarter, and I called off the dogs. 
Uh, I think we went up on the road and picked up where we left off on defense and, and improved and upped it up another notch. And I think our special teams improved also. I think offensively, you know, we played our best road game and we started out strong. Once we got inside the 10, we did not execute. And uh, I think had we executed, mm -hmm. we would have had a very strong performance offensively. Now, to the offense's credit, they did come out first drive of the second half and score a touchdown. Got the ball, took it right back down. You know, we dropped a touchdown pass. Uh, questionable pass interference call on third down wasn't called. Kick a field goal, we're up 16 mm nothing. -hmm. Get the ball back again because defense was just doing a tremendous job. Make two explosive plays in a row to get the ball to four. Now, we're, so we're humming pretty good. We've mm -hmm. got a rhythm going. And that's when we had the unfortunate fumble, which can't happen. And we almost fell on it, but they got there a little bit before we did. And then it became a ball game because Edinburgh went down and scored. And uh, we got the ball back, and on second down and eight, we had a misdirection, naked bootleg called. and We had a receiver run the wrong route, supposed to run a 10-yard over route, and ran the wrong route. And had he run the right route, it would have been a 30-yard game, and that would have been the ball game right there. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was details and execution on offense. And uh, so I guess in answer to your question, we've got to improve the most on off offensively right now. Mm -hmm. But our defense has to build on their performance, which I thought in 2012, when our defense really started to come together, great performance against Shippensburg. They built on it with a great performance against... New Haven uh, in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Now the 2013 defense, I think, read their press clippings a little too much. They showed up in camp thinking they were a great defense and really never became a great defense. Now what we have to do this week on defense is take another step. Mm -hmm. So it's the whole team and special teams has to continue to be a winning edge also. Yeah. So I'm very pleased with our improvement since the second game. How uh, difficult has it been this year with the defense? You're talking about the past defenses. When you're taking a look at, you have some first-year players, yeah. uh, both freshmen and transfers. Right. It takes a while to get chemistry to mesh, doesn't it? Well, it sure does. And then there's also tweaking of scheme, uh, depending on personnel, which we've started to do. And I think we did a really good job of mixing up our calls in this past game and having some good checks against certain formations. And, uh, you know, this week will be a challenge with Seton Hill because they've got a big, strong quarterback that was an all-conference player two years ago and did not play last year. Mm -hmm. And they've recruited two junior college receivers that are about 6'3", one's 220, big, long, angular guys that can really run. The quarterback's got a very strong arm. Now, Edinburgh was not able to really challenge our secondary because of our pass rush. Our secondary will be challenged this week horizontally and vertically. So this will be a different kind of test for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, you know, I'm confident we'll respond. Now, Drew Jackson is the quarterback for Seton Hill. Uh, we know all about Cody Harris and the things he can do. What does Jackson do best? We didn't see him last yeah. year, as you said. Well, he's more of a pocket passer. He, he's a pretty big guy, uh, 6'3", 210, 215. Mm -hmm. He's got a very, very strong arm. And he's got those big, fast, angular receivers. So you know, they're going to throw the ball down the field and, and he can make all the throws and they're still going to stretch you horizontally too with the quick throws. Uh, now, they've got three offensive linemen starting that are true freshmen. So, once again, our defensive line is in a position where they can make a major statement in this football game and, and that's what we need to do. Yeah, I would be, I think most of us would be surprised if they could run the ball against you. And uh, so, obviously, uh, that, that means you can probably take some chances on defense. Can't well, they threw it 77 times against Cal. And uh, it still st starts with stopping the run because if people can run the ball, then it opens up the passing game. But obviously, uh, they're going to come in here winging it. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we'll have different packages. We'll have zone and man packages. Uh, but, uh, you know, it'll be a challenge, I think, for some of our young DBs, you know, a, a coverage challenge that maybe they haven't had yet this year. Do you see improvement in, in these freshman DBs? 
Absolutely. I think Takai Turner's really made great progress. I thought Alan Wright really played well last week. Stevie Franco is really coming on. I mean, I'm very pleased with how he's playing. And Aquino Robertson has been solid all season long. Mm -hmm. We're getting and a lot better. Of course, McFadden's been around forever, which is good. Yeah. So, you know, always good to have players like that. Right. Well, this is good because uh, we know the second half of the season is going to be a challenge each game. It is homecoming, yeah. and that's always a big deal. And, uh, boy, it sounds like uh, it won't take much to get these guys ready to play. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I know you'll be out. You guys work hard during the week, though. Trying to get them ready. Yeah, well, the, the total focus has to be every day on improving, getting ready for this opponent. And uh, we've done a good job of that the last three or four weeks, and I'm sure we're going to do a good job. But we can't take anything for granted. you got to stay in the here and now, live in the present, and attention to detail and put the work in to prepare. So, you know, and it all starts today. Yeah, one other thing, it is early in the week that we're talking, preparing each day, uh, injury-wise. Uh, I know a couple of guys got nicked up. It looked mm -hmm. like he came out pretty well. For yeah, I think game. we came out in pretty good shape. Alex Berdahl did not play in the second half. He tweaked his hamstring again, but uh, the early reports are very positive, and I think he's probable. Takai Turner went out of the game in the first half uh, with a bruised knee, and he was feeling much better yesterday, so I'm optimistic about him. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nick Dabowski went out at the end of the game with a shoulder but was feeling better after the game. So I think we're starting around in a pretty good form. Yeah, and this is the time where this depth factor really helps, doesn't That's it? That's right, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt, good luck. Homecoming It's always a good time to keep this winning streak going. Thanks, Jack. Okay. That's Coach Kurt Signetti, and it'll be a 2 o'clock kickoff at Frank Signetti Field, George P. Miller Stadium, IUP, and Seton Hill. For the coach, this is Jack Benedict. Have a nice evening.